Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a pretty interesting video to get into, because we have a Switch 2 leak, and another Switch 2 leak, and another Switch 2 leak, and another Switch 2 leak. Things are really starting to heat up surrounding this next Nintendo console, so let's go ahead and get right into this video. So I've been saying, as we get closer to the big reveal of this next Nintendo console, leaks are going to be coming out left and right. And that seems to be the case today. Also, my mouth is still really messed up. I still have a bunch of stitches. I kind of drool, I kind of slur, and it's hard for me to pronounce a couple of words, so please bear with me. Uh, I'm doing my best here. Before we get started, if you could hit a like and subscribe. We are like 20 subscribers away from 11,000 subscribers. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you for all the support, and let's get right into it. So at the time of the Switch's release, I was in gaming, and I probably couldn't even afford a Switch if I wanted around that time. So I'm not sure when pre-orders happened, and I'm not sure when they revealed the console. But from what I've read online, it seems like Nintendo is following the same exact pattern that they did with a Switch for the Switch 2. And if you ask the internet as a whole, you'd say, yeah, September makes the most sense to reveal this. Pre-orders at the end of the year, and then launch the console in March. You gotta remember this console was supposed to be out in 2024, but they delayed the console. And the rumor was that they were having trouble with a first party Switch game, like a big launch game. Um, so they're trying to tweak some stuff there and work that out. So we have a couple leaks today, and it kind of paints a very vivid picture of how this thing might play out. So this is the first leak here. According to our own Brazil, the journalist who broke the news about the 2025 Switch 2 release, Nintendo seems to have brought forward some plans regarding the Switch 2 release schedule. Some presentations, he doesn't specify which ones, that were scheduled for the end of September. Ow, that was a really painful word to say. Seem to have been brought forward to the next couple of weeks. He also says that the current podcast, link below, should be one of the last before news about the Switch 2 really starts to pop up. He also adds, and this seems to be some of his personal opinion, that the Switch 2 release schedule will follow more or less the same route as what we saw with the Switch 1. And that's amazing news. Like the whole internet said September. And they also said something is happening in September. And for once, instead of something being delayed, it seems like something is being pushed up. So that's great. We're not going to talk about this one too much because we have some other stuff to get into. Uh, so let's do that. PH Brazil, which is the same person who we're talking about in the last leak, claims an indie world is happening in September, while hinting at Nintendo Direct will be held soon. Indie worlds are awesome. I know like a lot of people always feel disappointed when an indie world happens. Me, myself, I like indie games. I like pixelated games. I like games that have passion in them. And that's what you're getting in an indie game, you know? These are teams who are doing it for the love of it. Like, yes, they want to make money, but... They don't have these big investors normally backing them and having deadlines to push these games out. So I really enjoy indie games. And indie games are a huge part of the Switch's success. Like, if you want to play some indie games, you either go to Steam or you go on the Switch. The way that they worded this makes it seem like this Nintendo Direct is going to happen before the Indie World though. Because they said, Indie World in September, Nintendo Direct will be held soon. If the Nintendo Direct was after that, they would have said Indie World in September, Nintendo Direct after that sometime. So maybe we have a Direct soon indie world and then switch to presentation we also have gamescom i believe the end of this month so this is the time where a lot of things are going to be talked about and announced so that has me very very excited but ladies and gentlemen we don't have those two leaks we have another one and then another one later but let's get into the other one first that makes sense right switch successor may have a cooler on the dock and 60 watt charger Apparently the successor to the Nintendo Switch will have a 60 watt charger. For comparison, the Switch 1 has a charger with a maximum of 36 watts, and will have a cooler in the dock. In fact, ow. In fact, it's like some words are so hard to pronounce. In fact, it is not known exactly where the second cooler will be placed, but it is unlikely that a portable console will have two coolers, so it will probably be in the dock. I'm very curious how many people play their Switch docked compared to handheld. I got my first Switch in 2018, I got the original Switch, and then the version 2, and then the OLED, but since getting my first Switch in 2018, I have probably only played my Switch docked maybe 10 times. I just play it as a handheld console, and in my brain, it's just a handheld console. I know the marketing behind it is like, it's a hybrid console, you can play handheld, and you can play at home, but a majority of us probably only play handheld. And I think from a consumer standpoint, we still look at the Switch as a handheld console, so I feel like if Nintendo goes above and beyond with a Switch dock, you know, the resolution is amazing, it can charge faster, it has a cooler in the dock, and I'm sure some other bells and whistles, then Nintendo can kind of tap into that home console market. I'm not saying they're not already there, 
but the Switch to me just seems like a cool handheld console that can play Mario and Zelda and Animal Crossing and a bunch of indie stuff. But if this next generation is supposed to be as powerful as a PS4 and you can play games like Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto and more powerful games, even though you can play them handheld, they're probably going to look better docked to the TV. So Nintendo has to give you a reason to want to dock your console to the TV. So if this is true, well then that's just something else to check off to why this next generation is going to be amazing. But ladies and gentlemen, we have another leak, and this one has to do with a dock as well. The Switch 2 might stream to the TV without the dock. There is a rumor floating around thanks to the fan of board user Pablo and Raccoon. I do not know Pablo, and I do not know Raccoon, but shout out to them. That the Switch 2 could allow streaming gameplay directly to your TV without needing to dock the console. Hence previous news about fans that was similar to AirPlay and Chromecast. The dock would be used as a wireless receptor. This could bring back dual screen features we saw on the Wii U while keeping the hybrid aspect, potentially opening up the possibilities for DS 3DS gameplay compatibility. Imagine playing on a big screen while keeping a second screen for inventory or maps. So me and myself, I never had a Wii U, but one thing that I always heard the Wii U was praised for was like the dual screen technology. Like instead of playing a game and having to open up this big inventory wheel, you could be playing the game and then have the inventory down here and you could just change it on the fly. And I always thought that was really cool. So if this is true, this really does open up so many different possibilities. I'm actually somebody who uses Apple AirPlay all the time. Like I love watching UFC fights, but I don't like paying for them. So I like streaming them very legally. Uh, and I pull them up on my phone and AirPlay to my TV. Like it's kind of crazy how good it works. So if they're trying to utilize that technology, then I have no pushback against that. And then even if you don't like admitting it or you don't like it, that's the way the gaming industry is moving, subscription services are kind of like the big deal right now. And Nintendo Online is relatively cheap compared to the other stuff. But Nintendo wants to get some price increases and some different brackets. Like if you have this membership, this one, and this one. If they add DS and 3DS games to Nintendo Switch Online and charge $100 a year or something, it would be the best deal in gaming by far. So if you have these dual screen technology, then you can play DS and 3DS. I don't know, like, it would be really hard to compete against the Switch, especially as a Nintendo fan, but as somebody who's just trying to get the most value out of gaming, and Nintendo Switch Online has like, I don't know, thousands of games, and they're emulated very well, and there's just so much to choose from, and you really only had enough money to pick one service, it's like, the PlayStation subscriptions are for a set type of gamer, Xbox Game Pass, like, it's a lot of hate, but there's a lot of value there. But if Nintendo is the cheapest version, and has the most games, and has this cool new console, and you could only buy one service, why would you not go with a Nintendo Online subscription? And it's just little things like this, you know, like if they have this feature right here, where you have dual screen technology, I'm not saying it's going to make or break this next generation, but it will play a big part in it. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think about all this information? I would seriously love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below. I've been saying as we get closer, we're going to start getting more and more leaks, and that really seems to be the case. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you could. I'd really appreciate a follow. And you guys know me. I'll see you soon with a new video. Peace out.